Are you curious about the easiest and most effective ways to transform your mini PC into an Android powerhouse? Welcome to the Mini PC Tech Channel, where we talk about everything Mini PC. This is Mike, your host. Discover the myriad benefits of running Android on a Mini PC, including cost efficiency, customization options, and access to a vast library of apps. This video will guide you through optimizing performance, highlighting Android Mini PC's unique advantages over their Windows counterparts. Let's dive into how Android on a mini PC makes sense for both casual users and enthusiasts alike. We are going to explore three ways of using Android on a mini PC. Which one you do depends on how you want to use the mini PC. The third one gives you the best of both, wait until the end to find out how. Emulators are programs that allow you to imitate how something else would run. For example, Running Android on top of a Windows operating system such that any requests running within the emulator think they are communicating with a real Android operating system. Not ready to part with Windows? No problem. An emulator allows you to run Android as if it were a separate program on top of your existing operating system. This allows you to run Android without changing the underlying operating system. So, if you are used to the interface and programs you have, this is a way to have your cake and eat it too. Here's how to set up the most user-friendly emulator for gaming and productivity. It's simple, quick, and versatile. A common thread for all of these is you need to make sure the virtualization switch is enabled on Windows. I provided a link in the description below that helps you find it in the BIOS. One of these requires it while another will run without it but not as well. Another is needing at least an i5 or Ryzen 5 to run it. Also if you also want graphics that supports the level of graphics you want to see in your games, typically most mini PCs will qualify as they support at least 4K, but if you want something more powerful you need to shop for the right mini PC. There are 5 options I researched, let's look at each one of them. We have Blue Stacks, LD Player, Memu Play, Nox Player and Anderod Emulator. I provide links to each in the description below. BlueStacks emulator is the most well-known and has deep integration into Windows, so it works great on Windows 11. It is the only one that doesn't require virtualization, but the version you will be running will be a slower 32-bit version. It requires at least 4GB of RAM and 5GB of free space to run. Next we have LD Player. It focuses more on gaming than just an Android OS. But because it's about gaming the requirements are a bit higher. Even though it says all you need to run it is 2GB of RAM, 16GB or higher is better. Even though it says you only need 36GB of storage, 100GB or more is better. Finally, even though it just requires support for OpenGL 2.0, which most modern PCs support, you want a GPU that is at least as powerful as a GeForce GTX 1660. As we said, this one requires virtualization is enabled. Next, we have Memu Play. Memu Play is an emulator that provides a good balance between general app usage and gaming performance. It requires at least an i5 or better. Although it says it runs on Windows 7 or better, Windows 10 or better is recommended. At least 4GB of RAM for 64-bit systems is required, but 8GB or higher is better. At least 5GB of storage is required, but 10GB of free space or more is better. For graphics, most mini PCs support Intel UHD graphics or better. From there it's your own preference for gaming graphics. Next we have Knox Player. It can enhance your gaming sessions with additional features like keyboard mapping and gamepad support. For this, virtualization is recommended but not required. It also warns that if you have Bitdefender running, you can't run both with virtualization enabled. It really is the lightest of all of the options as well. You can run it on Windows XP, but Windows 7 or higher is recommended. At last a dual core processor is required, more cores are recommended especially if you enable virtualization. At least support for OpenGL 2.0 which means just about any modern mini PC. 
but your graphics preferences will probably dictate this. At least 1.5GB RAM required, but 4GB or more is recommended. And at least 3GB storage is required. Finally, we have Andy. The Android emulator brings the full Android experience to your desktop. It syncs with your Google account for a seamless transition between devices. The requirements are very reasonable. Dual-core CPU with virtualization support, 3GB of RAM, 10GB storage. Support for 4K displays. And it will load on just about any machine running at least Windows XP, Ubuntu 14, or OS X Mountain Lion. Now, we are ready for the install. Let's see how to do it. First, you pick the emulator you want. It's a program like any other so comes as a Windows installer. Then you just click on it and run as administrator. Follow the prompts just like you would any other Windows program install. It's that simple. To run it, you just run the program like any other Windows program. OK, now we're going to install the operating system. That means repurposing the computer to run only Android. With a direct OS installation, it's like giving your mini PC a new lease on life. But it also means leaving everything behind. That might not be bad if you can afford to dedicate the hardware to running Android. One big advantage over an emulator is that by its nature, an emulator runs slower than the direct operating system. We've got three top picks that'll cater to all your needs. Links are provided in the description below. Bliss OS is an open source OS based on Android, optimized for PC hardware. It provides a smooth Android experience. It's a good option if you have an older mini PC with limited resources. It's lightweight and gets frequent updates, but it might not be able to run all the apps you want and has a less user-friendly interface. It requires 1GB of RAM and 2GB of storage but it's recommended that you have double that. It is also actively maintained, so bug fixes and patches are common. Prime OS provides a better GUI environment. It's great for gamers and multitaskers. It requires at least 2GB of RAM and 16GB of storage. If you can, you will want at least double that. That's still something any mini PC currently on the market for over $100 can provide. One downside to this is that it is not open source. The company also sells laptops with it pre-installed for a little over $100, but I am not sure of the reputation of these devices. Finally, but not least, there is the Android x86 distro. This is an open source project with a large community. This will require a little more technical knowledge as most of the work will be DIY and it will probably be less stable than the other two choices. However, you can run this on as little as 512 megabytes of RAM and 2 gigabytes of storage. It is recommended that you have at least double that, and it's better if you have at least 8 gigabytes RAM and 16 gigabytes storage. In all cases, the installation of an operating system is a multi-step process. First, you download the distribution of your choice from the official website. Next, create a bootable USB drive using tools like Rufus or UNetbootin. There is a blog post referenced in the description that has a video in it that walks you through this step. Next, plug the USB drive into your mini PC and access the boot menu on your PC. Choose to boot from the USB drive and follow the on-screen instructions to start the installation. Now for our bonus method. Virtualization. It allows you to install a fully operational operating system without losing your current system. What is virtualization? It gives you the best of both worlds. It allows you to run Android inside what is called a virtual machine as if it were installed on your computer but really it is running in an isolated container. You just have to switch back to the main operating system and, voila! Nothing has changed. 
It runs by making requests to the OS at a low level. So, it shares resources with the main operating system. It is a bit slower than running an installed OS, and it takes up resources just as an emulator would, but you need to usually predict what you need when you start so you may lose more than you would with just an emulator. For the tech savvy, virtualization offers a risk-free Android experience. It allows you to experiment without affecting your mini PC's main operating system. So what does this mean? It means you have two new options. You can create a virtual machine running one of the three operating systems we mentioned. Or, as crazy as it sounds, you can create an operating system running Windows, Ubuntu or even macOS and run an emulator inside of it. Why would you want to do that? Maybe you have other uses for the virtual machine. And there you have it. Three foolproof ways to transform your mini PC into an Android hub. Which method will you try first? Share your plans or questions below. And don't forget to subscribe for more guides and tech tips. This is Mike from Mini PC Tech, exploring the endless possibilities of compact computing. See you in the next video.